I want to start by asking you about the training. You're getting ready to put into practice everything you've been learning for the past couple of years. Uh, what has it been like traveling all around the world, getting ready for this flight? It's been great. I love the travel. I love the people uh, I've met along the way. The relationships that I've built in, uh, in Germany, in Japan, and especially over here in Russia, back in Houston, uh, we've got a great training team, and now we're going to transition over to a great mission control team. Uh, I have my lead flight director, my lead flight surgeon uh, are with me in Russia. So uh, really, it's just uh, making all these relationships around the world has been, has been absolutely fantastic. I wondered about that. Is, is there a big part of the training that's involved with teaching you guys how to deal with your different flight control teams around the world? Because they're critical in, in getting the mission accomplished. I think we don't really have a specific training program for that, but it's to me it's the exposure to their countries. So just going over there and training with them, uh, you're going to live for a week or so in Germany, a week or so in Japan, and then I've spent more than a year in Russia. Uh, there's no way you can spend some time immersed in these cultures and not pull out the details that you need to. Uh, so it's been really good for me to, to, to see all the different sides, and there are definitely differences. Has the experience for you of having been the Capcom here in Mission Control help you figure out how you deal with the ground? Uh, let's wait maybe a day for the answer to that question, but <laughs> I definitely think it, it will help me because I know, I know the intensity that Mission Control works at, and I know how many people are involved in making these decisions, and there is no way that that knowledge will not help me during my six months in space. Your launch day. Tell me what that's going to be like. What is that day for a crew as you're getting ready to leave the planet? Uh, it's going to probably continue to be surreal, and I'm sure I will have moments of just, I don't want to say pure panic, but pure adrenaline just coursing through me uh, crazy. Six months ago, I was in Baikonur for the launch of Rick Mastracchio, Koichi Wakata, and Mikhail Turin. And I got to see every step of the way for them, and uh, really, really neat. The formal ceremonies that you go to, the last time that you're going to see your spouse, uh, going to suit up in the spacesuit, and then heading out to the launch pad. And we got to ride with those guys all the way out to the launch pad, and uh, they were ready. I mean, they were ready. It was really neat. It was very surreal to be with them, and I imagine for us it'll, it'll be pretty much the same, but I think we'll be joking around a little bit more than they were. On this uh, ride in the Soyuz, you're going to be in the left seat, to Max Sarayev's left, as essentially the co-pilot on this Soyuz. Uh, how is that going to compare Correct. to flying fighter jets? Uh, flying fighter jets. In the, in the fighter jet, you're, you're in control of your destiny there. You have the control stick. You have the throttles. Um, and then the systems are pretty automated to keep you, keep you going. On the Soyuz, on the other hand, uh, it's a completely automated system, and you're only there to recover in case of a failure or an emergency. And I've spent the last year of my life really, really honing these skills, and, uh, and Max and I are ready. They can throw anything at us uh, in the training flow, and we can, we can pretty much handle it. So I really love sitting in the left seat. I absolutely love working with Max Sarayev. He's a great, great commander, and uh, we're ready. It's going to be fun. You're heading to the station to spend six months doing science. Tell me two or three of the, the really neat things that you're looking forward to get to doing. Oh, I want to do all of it. I'm looking forward to the science that really is going to look at my body and how it behaves in space. I have uh, a number of, of uh, medical experiments. One is the, the sprint uh, exercise protocol, so working out uh, shorter workouts but really high intensity. So I know anytime I get on the treadmill, I'm going to max heart rate. Uh, that's one that I really am excited to see how it works, excited to see how I feel when I get home, and I think the results are going to be great. Also, uh, I'm doing lots of ultrasound work uh, with uh, P uh, investigators on the ground. I'll be looking at my heart, my heart valves, uh, blood volume. Also be doing ultrasound of the eyes to see how the uh, fluid shift changes uh, our ocular pressure. All those are extremely interesting to me because we need to know these answers if we're going to have humans in space for 500 plus days. So onward to Mars, that's kind of a requirement for us. But I'm also looking forward to some of the, I'd say, uh, down in the weeds kind of science, some of the protein crystal growth. Uh, we also have three different CubeSat deployers that we're going to check out in the Japanese airlock. Uh, and then finally, I think just a fun one, SpaceX 4 should bring up uh, 3D printing, and I really want to play around with a 3D printer. I think that's really going to change the way we think about spaceflight in the future. 
Reed, what has to happen on this mission for you to consider it to have been successful? Come home. That's it. I think uh, I think we're we're ready for everything up there. Uh, I'm excited to get the science underway, but in the end, I want to come home and walk on the grass again. Well, Reed, uh, thanks for the talk and and good luck on the mission. All right, thanks. It's great talk to you. Great to see uh, MCC in the background too. I miss Houston. <laughs>